we are on a slight foraging adventure to go look for an arbutus tree branch. I'm inspired by my friend Laureen Boho Blue Van, who has tons of um, handles made out of this beautiful wood. And I have the perfect purpose for it in my van right now. And if I actually do find a nice length, kind of like a shower rod, I'll show you guys what I mean later, but um, yeah, it's something specific, so I'm not sure if we'll actually be able to find it. Either way, it's such a perfect and bright day. Glad to go for a walk this morning. So here is a fallen portion of an Arbutus tree that Lorraine and I were playing with the other day. So I'm gonna examine it and see if something might work. Maybe one of the big ones. And then I have a hatchet in my backpack. I don't know what happened to this tree, but spliced. Over there is a Christmas tree farm. And that sunshine and misty mountains. So pretty. Honestly, I'm thinking this might work. I kind of want to have options, so we'll see how hard it is to do this. First one that I picked out, I feel like is much too thick, so that's a veto. This one has an amazing curve, so that's a contender, but I did rip it a bunch there. And then the other two are a lot thinner, so we got options. Thank you so much, beautiful Arbutus tree. I owe you one. Hmm, I gotta put my solar panel out when we get back. This one has a very good even arc, which is nice. Most of them are heavy on one side, but then there's this one that also works. That also has a decent arc. It just has like a little, little curve also in it, like a little bit exciting curve. So we have two really good options. So I think we'll just like try the project and expect one not to work and then I'll have a backup. I feel like a Swiss army knife was the only thing, only camping gadget I always had growing up, even though I never went camping. Now that I camp all the time, I never have a Swiss army knife. What happened to them all? just try to paint a portion of the wall today. Got some towels down, ready to paint.
This town, Port Alberni, is just surrounded by mountains. 360 view of mountains, mountains, and mountains. Except that one over there, to the east of me now. Oh my god, my beard is crazy. It's covered in snow. Thick snow, it looks so cool. A true winter mountain. I wonder what it's called. It feels very safe, like I'm in this valley, like in the center of a big bowl, which also would make me terrified of flooding. Is that a rational fear here? Port Alberni seems to be a pretty busy city, lots and lots of traffic, but also a small town vibe. morning here today in Port Alberni. Can't even see any of the surrounding mountains currently, but it's only 7 a.m. But we're gonna make a move to the next rest stop along the highway westward, which I think was like Taylor River or something like that. And I think I'm gonna spend today there. And let's get on the road. I'm gonna start the van. Probably gonna, I'm gonna say it takes like eight pumps. Eight, cause you have to like pump the gas every time I start it. And the longer I wait between starts, the more I have to. So, and it always takes like confidence. Like I have to be focused. If I'm not like ready to drive and I don't pump the ignition right, then my car doesn't let me drive. So, am I ready to drive today? Good old car. Six, pretty good. Exciting new adventure time, let's go, come along, join me. At Taylor River Rest Area, where the snow is a thing again. You can kind of see my van in the distance through the trees. Look how pretty the snow is though. Untouched and sparkling. Surrounded by huge mountains. And here comes the sun. So that was a nice little walk with my coffee. I'm inspired to go farther with some actual hiking boots instead of my... My little running shoes that are made of fabric and mesh. And I'm going to also fill up any water that I need because I hear a beautiful big rushing river close by. Yay, I'm excited to be in the middle of nowhere. There's good bars here, but I noticed that there was a lot of lacking internet along the way. Oh, now that I, I love when I sit somewhere and I just notice all the little details that I don't notice if I keep walking. There are some spider webs connecting all these branches and they're just glittering in the sun as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna go about my daily routine in a new spectacular location and then do some adventuring probably in about an hour. There were some views on the way here that were spectacular when the mist wasn't in the way. I saw some snowy, snowy, thick, snowy, fluffy mountains looming over all of us. Pretty amazing. two applied getting there I would say the third layer will make a big difference beautiful day to air out my van I'm 
It's an early morning. Going for a walk to look for some water and I found this rocky ledge that's perfect for sitting and admiring. <laughs> Yesterday I saw a beaver and it was smacking its tail a bunch, maybe trying to shock the water for some fishes or just being aggressive, claiming his territory when he heard me coming. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't bring my camera, but it was really cool. And the first time I've seen a beaver act like that before. I'm gonna walk along this river for a little while and find a good spot to collect. Got my backpack with me and we'll start filtering some water. The snow and the white just makes every green part look so much more green. I love the way that snow can do that. Filled up some water in my backpack. Time to hike back. <laughs> back, back, back. So we are parked at construction, which gives me a wonderful time to update y'all. As long as people don't start moving all of a sudden. Just put my van in neutral. And yeah, it's been some twisty roads. Twisty, hilly. Um, I would say there was one incline that took like some effort. Maybe two. One had like a passing lane, so I wasn't mad about going super slow. But the other one, luckily no one was around. And I just creeped up it super slow. Also, a good tip was to use my... Okay, I think we're going. Okay, time to go, yay! That was not a long wait at all. Cool. What I was trying to say is using my GPS to know about the sharp turns and all the curves in the road ahead of time is really useful. Okay, time to focus. Found some parking just over there. That is also closed. Um, due to hazards, apparently. But obviously, I have to go check out what those hazards could be. And also, this is just such a sweet, nice little walk. Even if it's cut short, that's okay. One trail has been remade, remade recently. This trail is old, and this trail has some old um, caution tape on it. So obviously, we're going to go down the caution tape way and see what's going on down here. We made it, we made it through the mountain pass. We are very close to Euclid and Tofino. Uh, allegedly, this is a spot that's closest. Allegedly, this is the closest spot to Tofino that you won't get a fine for parking overnight, but I don't really know if that's the case. The plan will be to hit up uh, Euclid tomorrow and, or later today, we'll see. I wanna do the lighthouse loop walking trail and any other trails that I can find, go to Long Beach, just live my life and actually seeing these places for the first time. You excited to join? Around this forest is a ton of stumps, enormous stumps from logged trees. And there's been a lot of plaques about it on how they're restoring it and what they're doing to help the land, like cutting grooves into trees to promote growth and new fungus. But yeah, just to think about all the big, huge trees that used to be here 
that they cut down and those were huge sources of habitats and nutrients for this land so they're trying to keep it alive and walking through right now it's so peaceful the sun is so nice and the wind is so gentle and I just see so many little trees growing from these enormous stumps and it looks beautiful covered in moss tons of so many different types of trees and plants and so much green <laughs> this is a beautiful beautiful spot though some of this is rotted away i guess the flooding kind of made some of it insecure i've definitely noticed some wobble on parts of it which is explains the caution tape at the front all of these ancient bones the ancient mammoths of logged trees that's amazing They got to it before the people could. The business, the men got to it before everyone else and that's what happens. With tons of logs. Oh, I was reading about this, how it, they just dumped a bunch of logs here to stop the flow of water. And, or they didn't do it to stop the flow of water, they just discarded unwanted ones. And then it stopped the flow of water, which killed a bunch of fish and a bunch of fish eggs got caught up in it and no nutrients got to them. and just ruined a bunch of stuff. There was so much care taken to repair logging damage in this area. It's just interesting seeing the techniques that they implemented. It's kind of like a very composed forest, kind of just touched by humans a little bit everywhere to make it work a little bit better to repair damage they've created before. So yeah, some of these posts are just rotted away. Must have raised too much around here. I know this is all tilted. Cutting the mold off of my window covers. It was a nice idea. It definitely made it homey for like about a year, but coming to BC created mold. So I'm just gonna cut it off. Sad not really an easy way of washing this but who knows maybe i'll do it again it was actually really annoying to sew use my sewing machine through the window cover things so maybe i'll just try to glue it next time to be honest <clears throat> Honestly, I've noticed that even for the lighting in my van, like if I have lights on on the inside of my van, if it's hitting this instead of the curtain, it reflects more light. So I actually kind of prefer the shiny side. So this tree is like growing on top of a tree. Uh, where do the roots go? This feels like a magic trick. I'm confused. The comfort I feel just being beside this big hunk of tree. And then all of these huge logs just crisscrossing over each other covered in moss. This is just such a nice spot. And this fallen tree, you follow it down to its base and it's got tons of mushrooms. Let's get a closer look. So this is how I'm using my Arbutus tree branch curtain rod. I use this clip to hold it up. Usually I would like tuck it nicely. Actually, you know why I'm not really tucking it right now is because 
it's really rainy and it's been really rainy for the past week or so so my walls are kind of melting they're like permanently wet <laughs> because i just painted them and they didn't cure as hard it's not all wet it's not affecting a lot it's just i don't want to have things touching against it so yeah underneath i have the arbutus branch used the, the nice curly one and over here <laughs> i use like multiple joints of the arbutus branch to screw into that existing wood and i hit all the grossness with the flower because of course i would and then i screwed the other the main long branch into that other branch if you know what i'm talking about and there's some white paint on there but yeah so it's doing a job so i made this like white mesh fabric thing just from some old curtains that i had and i put a string through the top of it that has loops on the end because typically during the summer when i have my doors open i hook each end of this curtain into little screws uh, little hooks and screws that i have surrounding my doors so that's why i have it but i think it's a really good purpose to use it all the time because i love that fabric i love looking at it and i love how it brightens the room and just makes things look more romantic especially if the wind's blowing it's like all flowy and really nice i'm currently using it as a full wall curtain that i think looks really nice um, it would look even better if I cleaned up and it was a sunny day, but you know what? It's fine. <laughs> it does have like random stains on it, but that's just the nature of it. I do wash it sometimes and yeah, that, that definitely helps. Anyways, that is that project that I got done.